Today, we're going to be talking about something that has plagued Panasonic S-Series cameras probably more so than the autofocus. I do want to preface that I have been fortunate and I can only recall maybe six times in the year and a half of owning my S1H that I've gotten a .MDT file. I don't know if it's something to do with my camera or what, but the reason I finally want to talk more about them is Panasonic recently came out with some info on the best ways to hopefully prevent slash reduce and even recover MDT files you get. I'll link that info in the description if you wanna go and read it for yourself or just watch this video. Lastly, before we get started, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video and that's Skillshare. If you don't know me, my name's Dustin, your video tour guide. And remember to keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Remember that it's always important to not only learn new things, but improve your craft from a place like Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of inspiring classes for creators like you and me. You can explore new skills relating to videography, or maybe you have some other passions that you are wanting to explore and deepen your knowledge. There's basically an endless supply of topics to discover and explore, like for example, color grading, motion graphics, even how to make an indie short film. Personally, I just finished watching a class by Thomas Frank called Productivity for Creatives. Basically in the class, he teaches you how to create systems in your head and in the real world so you can accomplish your creative work more efficiently and effectively. The classes are specifically curated for learning, which means they're very digestible to watch and there are no ads to slow down your learning process so you can stay focused. They're always launching new premium classes so you can literally take your learning and knowledge to new heights or discover new topics and hobbies that you're passionate about. Skillshare is offering the first thousand of my subscribers who click the link in the description a one month free trial of their premium membership so you can explore your creativity even further. One last thing before we get started, I have a big announcement coming soon regarding my camera accessory business. That's right, if you want the latest, most up-to-date news on that, go to cinelid.com and sign up for the email list or follow me on Instagram. There are links to everything down in the description. Now, the first thing I wanna mention about MDT files is that there are nothing new in regards to Panasonic cameras. When I was doing my research for this video, I found information about how to recover MDT files from the GH4 and the GH5. So this isn't specific to just the S-series cameras and can happen on older models of their cameras as well. Now let's talk about why MDT files get created in the first place. Basically, Panasonic cameras offer high bitrate recording modes for long periods of time. In order for them to do this, when you start recording, they will create a temporary file called an MDT file. Then once you stop recording, the camera will add the additional information needed to that file depending on the settings of your camera, and it will then save to the memory card. Since MDT files don't contain relevant metadata, you can't view an MDT file on a computer or a camera. So what are the reasons why these files get created and how can we prevent them? The biggest reason that these files get created is because the camera has some kind of power interruption, whether or not the camera is powered internally by a battery or by another kind of external source. Obviously, if you remove the battery, power the camera off, or if the battery dies while you're recording, you'll probably get an MDT file. Now sure, it happens every now and then that the battery dies while you're recording, but that's pretty rare. You might also be saying, I've never removed the battery while it was recording though, and I still get them, but it's possible you have without knowing it. Now, depending on the card and the right speed of the card, once you stop recording, that doesn't mean you're safe to power the camera off or remove the battery. Panasonic states that it can sometimes take up to 10 seconds for that file to finish writing to the card before it is safe to power off the camera or remove the battery. I personally know I've done this before and that's probably how some of my MDT files have been created. Oh, and I think this is pretty obvious, but this also applies to removing the memory card as well. Keep in mind too that the S1H has a silent mode which will purposely turn off the memory card access light. So again, if you're in silent mode, be sure you wait enough time for the file to finish writing to the card before you do anything really. But what about the times that you know for sure that you didn't do any of this 
and still got one. Well, that's where it's really important that you use Panasonic branded batteries for your S1, S1R, S1H, S5, basically just any Panasonic camera. Third-party batteries can sometimes be incapable of supplying enough continuous power to the camera, which will result in an MDT file. I have always used Panasonic branded batteries since I got my S1H, so this is another reason why it's possible I haven't really had many MDT files. But again, what if you do all of this and still get some MDT files? This is where media cards also play a role. There are cases where the card you are using may have stopped accepting data in the middle of your recording due to insufficient write speed, which could result in an MDT file. I can recall two times that it did, and one of which was at a very important moment while I was filming. Luckily, I was able to wait about five seconds and started recording again, and got the shot I needed. Panasonic lists three SD cards that it recommends for video recording. If you want the specific info, check the link in the description and it is actually really important to double check that info because there are specific models that are compatible. Briefly summarizing, Panasonic V90, ProGrade Digital V90, and Sony Tough V90 are best. I will provide links to those cards in the description as well. I personally use ProMaster V90. I know those aren't any of the brands it recommends, but these cards I just already had, and since they aren't giving me tons of problems, I'm just sticking with them, but I highly recommend using what they say to use. Unless you really like living on the edge like me, I guess. Moving on. So now, what do we do if we get an MDT file even after all that or how do we recover past MDT files? Currently, I think the best bet is to use the Lumix repair tool. The info is in the link I provided as well, but I'm actually kind of curious if we can recover some of the MDT files that I have gotten with this tool. This will also walk you guys through the steps to using this software as well. And keep in mind, it does say it is MDT files that are created before the latest firmware, which also reminds me be sure to update the firmware on your camera because they have also improved some of the cases where an MDT file was created by some of the reasons I mentioned or some other phenomenon. In the latest firmware, it says that it has fixed cases where the camera was moving around quickly or your subject was moving around quickly and it generated a file that couldn't be read by the camera. That is now fixed. Now back to the Lumix repair tool. It also states that this isn't a 100% guaranteed recovery but in most cases, it will fix it. I'd be sure to check if the MDT file has any memory written to it, like if it is six gigs or something like that. If it says zero kilobytes, then my bet is you can't recover it. All right, so let's try and recover a few of the MDT files I managed to find. One is from a wedding shoot and one is actually from just a few weeks ago. There was a few I remember getting in a YouTube video I filmed back in the day, but I think I ended up just deleting them because I couldn't recover the files and I ended up reshooting those shots. The time when I got the most MDTs was when I had an older version of one of the Sony Tough cards. It was soon after I bought my S1H. I ended up returning those cards though because I read somewhere that there was something specifically wrong with those cards on Sony's side, not Panasonic. Sony has since fixed the issue though. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna copy the files onto your computer. You don't wanna try and repair the files straight from the card. Now go to the website I linked in the description. This is basically just everything I have just covered, but scroll down and right here, you can click on this link and it will take you to the Lumix repair tool. So scroll down, accept the user agreement, select the model. I have my S1H, so obviously I choose the S1H, and then enter the 11 digit code on the bottom of your camera. Now I forgot to mention one big downside to this software is that it is only compatible with Windows. So if you're on Mac, I'm sorry. Hopefully they have some kind of Mac version in the works. Okay, and then we'll hit download. Now we're just gonna wanna extract that file and I'm gonna put it on my desktop. Then we're gonna wanna open the file up and I think you can just drag and drop the file in there. Yeah, so you can just drag it, drop it in there. I forgot to mention, you're also gonna want a file that has been saved correctly. So be sure you also drag one file onto your computer that has been saved correctly. And then that file is gonna go into the movie file. And then after that, just hit repair. And apparently that file cannot be repaired. <laughs> well, that sucks. All right, so I learned something kind of important. I went back to those shoot days and I pulled a file that was right next to the MDT file. I don't think it needs to be right next to it, but I would also grab an extra file with your MDT file from the exact same shoot day and then use that file as the file that isn't corrupted, hit repair, 
hit OK, and we just saw this file pop up. And let me just do the other one as well. And that one seems to have worked as well. I'm gonna open up this one and let's just see if it worked. It worked. Look at that. One of the shots from one of my shoots. <laughs> I can finally use it now. I mean, I've already delivered their video, but like I said, this is the only file on that specific shoot day and I'd gone full wedding days without getting an MDT file, so. I don't know what's going on. Let's see if this one worked. Yeah, see, this one was from the other day as well. As you can see from the last video. Nice. I think I was trying to do it with the 3D follow focus on this shot, but it wasn't working, so I just ended up doing manual as well, so. And there you have it. I know people have reached out to me asking what to do about MDT files, and I'm sorry that I'm just barely covering this topic. The reason I've waited so long is really, I just have either been lucky or a lot of things Panasonic recommended doing, I was just already doing, I guess. There also wasn't really a lot of info out there on what to do, quite frankly, if you got an MDT file. A few months back, I did ask someone from Panasonic directly what the deal was about MDT files and if they were aware of the problem. And he said, they are, of course. Like I mentioned, this problem has existed in the past and it isn't new to the S-Series cameras specifically. Now, I do wanna say there are times on like my Sony camera, for example, where I did something like turning the camera off while recording, accidentally taking the battery out or just anything that Panasonic says to make sure not to do that. I, and I've gotten a corrupted file on my Sony as well. Panasonic also did mention though in that email, they are constantly working on ways to improve on this from happening and to make sure your camera always has the latest firmware. Remember all the information I covered, you can find at the link in the description. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a triple thumbs up and if you support me, be sure to check out all the links in the description, or you can support me by just hitting the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of future uploads. Until the next video though, happy filming.